Cool. Hey, welcome to another episode of Film House talking about The Last Jedi. Joined by John Reisinger, Bruce Green. Hello. Who's here? James Willems, Lawrence Sontag, and Elise Willems. We're all here. We're all going to talk about it because we all saw it. I'm your host, Adam Kovic. This Everyone episode brought to you by MacWeldon.com. You can get some, uh, what do you get? 20% off using a promo code. We'll give that to you uh, sometime later in the show. But right now, we got a lot of things to say, don't we? Everyone does. Everyone has a no thing movie. to say. No movie has been seen by this many people to cultivate so many differing opinions. I do want to apologize for coming out late on this. I got sick. I'm still sick, but whatever. Still going to talk about it. So You don't have to apologize. We eh. can do this when we're good and ready, Adam. That works. Which is, right. now. Which is I, now. Can I pose that question first? Well, sure. Why is it so talked about? Because it's a it's Star a movie Wars, with a lots lots of ups and downs. I think yeah, yeah but like it's a movie so that you take out what you want kind of from it. Well, Force Awakens wasn't polarizing because it was something we'd all seen before. It's very familiar, and it was also a J.J. Abrams movie, which are infinitely palatable. Mm -hmm. So you can watch those movies over and over and over and be like, "Well, I had fun. Well, I had fun over and over and over." And Last mm -hmm. Jedi's not quite like that. There what, are lots what, of things. What was it? Um, May I ask? Oh, yes. We're doing full spoilers on this. Oh yeah. yes, should we? I sure. think we should. Everyone in the world has seen it yeah, by this point. I'm, I'm just checking just to, no, so we can wise. provide that I, I disclaimer. Would, I totally agree. I, I think Sorry. I think full spoilers. No, Bruce, go on. Fun. You were going to explain it. What was the what was your question, Adam? Why, why are we talking it? about why, it? Why is this one polarizing? Um, I, because like James said, you can kind of pull out moments that you didn't like, and then there are lots of moments that you did like. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's pretty clear that when you watch the film, there are things that you go, "What? Why did they do that?" And then other, other times, like, "Fuck yeah, that's cool." Okay. So I well, don't. let's let's quickly. I want to go down the row. What I want to hear at least one thing from everyone that they liked. Sure, That's about good. the movie. That's I'll good. I'll say I liked the uh, the Ray and Kylo Ren scenes. Ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. I thought those were fun. I thought uh, the moment in particular was the lightsaber fight. I thought that was cool. Oh. I thought it was uh, different, a little unique. Had a fun little twist to it, and that's all I'll say. Okay. Ah. All right. um, I think it has some of the best action choreography in any Star Wars film, like in terms of knowing the placement of ships and smaller ships and people in inside the ships all happening all in the same point on tiered levels. Um, so there you go. Um, I think for me, the uh, the Luke projection was the, one of the coolest parts for me in that movie, just because I was waiting for a huge payoff with Luke. Mm -hmm. um, and I pretty much got it. So I, I went to two screenings. Both of them, people clapped for yeah, that scene. they did. Mm -hmm. Which is so weird. I, I, I think, I mean, like, they were excited to see Luke Skywalker do something cool because we all knew he was... But the but everyone claps when it shows that he wasn't there. Well, because, you know, like, is it, the movie... The it was, no, that's, that's what I mean. It was yeah. a cool it's, moment. The movie Don't get itself, me wrong. Well, the movie itself shows, yeah. like, sort of like, yeah. he can't be beaten, is basically what it boils down to. John well, just hit the nail on the head. He pulled the prestige Yeah, card. He pulled the prestige. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a clone of Luke that falls into a tub. <laughs> um, he created a new well, legend. I think part of that, the thing of that is him, if he had gone out there and fought Kylo Ren and it was a really good sword battle, it wouldn't have made Luke seem as influential in the world of Star Wars as he could have been by yeah. doing what he did. I mm. agree. So. Uh, I, Lawrence, what about you? What, what did you like? Uh, I liked. Uh, it's it's in the vein of action sequences, but for every like memorable big popcorn moment of any of the Star Wars films, the Last Jedi has a version of that, and it's it's really good. Mm, yeah. uh, so very superficially, it's got amazing action. It's got amazing sword fights. It's got amazing backdrops. It's got great visuals. It's very unique. It goes to a lot of places. It's got cool space animals. I if you were to bullet list. All of the things that Star Wars movies are, it's got them all, and they're all really well made. As far as whether they add up together to make something that's greater than those parts, that's, hmm. I think, where all the divisiveness comes in. Elise, what'd you like? I loved the scene with Kylo Ren and Rey and Snoke. I liked a lot of the themes of the movie, especially Fareed, uh, one of our Let's Play directors, and I were talking about this earlier. Um, just kind of that it now attributes... Uh, the fact that free agency is a thing in Star Wars birthright isn't indicative of of your status in life and wh what your status can be mm. and i think that's a really great message bruce and i have talked about how it subverts a lot of what you think you know about star wars and uh what y you know uh, a character from star wars can be what they need to be to to really be special and achieve anything and this kind of flips out on its head I loved the really like emotional, memorable scene with the droids at the end. Uh, <laughs> Waiting for that. And yeah, really I, I, only I, given one. I um, I only really, one. and I, I also liked the nuns. 
on the island. I like the space nuns. John, space what'd nuns. you like? Um, I absolutely, I'll go just very specific instead of a grand idea, but um, I loved Hux. Hux is so good. Oh. I loved Hux okay. throughout this entire film, and some people will point out parts of the film that they didn't like of you know Hux's moments. I adored him, and I think that Ryan Johnson figured out Hux ten times more than J.J. Abrams figured out Hux. Man, that sure. throne room, though. There was no, like, fuck you, I'm evil and I love Such it. Such a good moment. In that throne room. Just the just a hand gesture. Yeah. Yeah. Just a hand gesture. Well, it's everything. It's just the curtains on the walls, the royal guard. Hmm. That is Snoke. Snoke's Sith dick is so big. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, let's talk about all the stuff we hate. Um, <laughs> because well, I got all my man. bullet points ready to go here. Uh, petition or change.org. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Read, read it to me. Petitioning Ryan Johnson himself. Uh, Ryan Johnson has to admit that The Last Jedi is awful. Um, <laughs> the goal of this petition is to make sure that the oh so mighty Ryan Johnson will know that we do not support his decisions. Make sure he knows what he created is not a masterpiece. So there's a whole bulleted list here. Uh, I want to get it. You know, I'll, t- I'll, tr- I'll trickle them out because this, uh, I think, represents everything that I believe firmly in my heart. <laughs> okay. uh, so there you go. Oh, okay. I, mean, I don't have to do it now. Oh, no. Because no, the okay, good. They're um, amazing. I'm, I'll just say right off the bat, I did not think this was a good film. Mm. I thought it was a fun movie, but as far as uh, I always thought Star Wars was pretty good at being a film and a good movie, I thought it offered something that you could look at it and there were themes and great pieces of it that like kind of tran- transpired so many different things. Like It was just, I don't know. It was something always so much bigger, and this one just felt like, this felt almost worse than Rogue One in a lot of ways. Wow. Um, but some people liked Rogue. To be clear, so for, I, I didn't. I didn't hate Rogue One. That was the thing. Like, and it's one of those things where it's like upon second viewing, you go, okay, maybe I didn't hate it as much. I was very surprised to see how far Ra- Raul. Uh, he really likes list. Rogue One. He puts but Rogue he One pretty high That's that's don't let that influence well, so you. I I think they're very similar. I think this and Rogue One are very similar movies. Yeah. I think the difference is that for me, at least watching Rogue One, I spent the first half. Or if not more, like the first sixty percent of it, going like, what am I? Why do I care about any of it? Like, what confusing. am I? What do I? What's going on? And why do I care about any of these people? Rogue One or this? Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and then it drops you in to the climax of the movie, which is awesome. epic yeah, and awesome. awesome, and is like a huge payoff, filmic payoff. It's cinematic. You feel the characters moving around doing stuff, with disregarding a little bit at the end where they just are like, all right, we need to wrap things up. It's got so many fucking moments, but it's all stacked one and one. I feel like I felt similar about The Last Jedi, except that it was like, here's a five-minute period where I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then it would cut back to something awesome for five minutes, and then it would cut back to something else that I was like, why Why am I, like, so you don't notice it as much, or you notice it more? I I thought the pacing was really bad in Last Jedi, because, we'll get to this later, but everything the Rebels do is pointless. Like, it, it has... It it results only in bad stuff, mm-hmm. and no one there are no, no one is reprimanded for it. It's almost like, oh well, um, everyone's so, dead. Yeah, I, po. Think, <laughs> I think that is really Pope illustrating to us that the rebels are very underpowered. That's that's what I was trying. Yeah, compared that's to yeah, I think it was and, purposeful. And um, I mean, uh, well, they they were just it was basically just like survival to an extent with them just try like and but but my my point being, Poe went on this. He went. He went. Oh, uh, that, his entire subplot yeah. meant nothing. His, his, his subplot ended yes. up meaning nothing, and in fact, ended up causing more damage, which could have been a big lesson, could have big, been a big moment, but it was just more of like, "Oh, Poe, you keep being you, baby." Well, his, well, <laughs> his subplot meant nothing beyond to introduce the fact that there are these young children that mm-hmm. are going to join the resistance. That anybody can have the force. You know, at the end when you see the young kid move the broom, it's like anybody can have the force. Sure, do we need to that? that? That I think was trying to make an important statement. To that point, to Elise's point. It's the same with Finn and Rose. Mm-hmm. Their storyline literally results in nothing yep. except for the fact that they inspired kids on that planet well, that they were that they went to. And it's it's weird because you can almost you can almost see where it was about to mean something. So like Poe, you can't jump in something and blow it up. At the end, Poe is ostensibly saying, Hey, we need to we need to divert when they're trying to shoot down the mini Death Star laser. Poe says, like, hey, we need to get out of here. Okay, maybe that's an arc. Maybe he learned his lesson. But that scene is also immediately then crowded by Finn on a suicide run for whatever reason, and then Rose has to save him. So it almost seemed like they were about to do something, but then they confused it with something else that was also trying to pay off another arc that wasn't actually paid off. So, yeah. so I think this is I think this is a perfect example of why people have such differing opinions. Because I think the exact same plot lines could result in 
Adam being frustrated with Poe's consistent sh- like shortcomings as a hero, um, but then maybe Elise interprets it as this is the journey he goes through to learn the lesson right. of pulling all the soldiers away at the end. Um, to to that point, it's like I think with me, it's like I like the message more than I like actually watching that. Hmm. Um, I like the message it sends of of uh, you know free will and agency and hard work and dedication as opposed to just entitlement and. Mm-hmm. Uh, family lineage, etc. Listening to the people that are your leaders, yeah. like that, you know, that you, can, you can trust, other than just going out and doing your own thing. I, I, I like the message that, that that sends, but I didn't enjoy watching it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's so. For me, there were certain things. A lot of people that really liked it, criticizing the people that didn't like it, that I've observed seem to be really like kind of missing the point. <laughs> um, I think there's a certain mood that a film that's made a certain way will make you feel. And if you just didn't like it because of the way, cause like Adam was saying, the jarring nature of going from something you love to something you hate again and again and again could result in a feeling of just not wanting to deal with it. Yeah. I don't want this bipolar relationship it, it actually, with the movie. It hasn't really created, it created apathy. Hmm. I mean, I, I walk, don't care. So I walked away from it going like, man, that movie was really, really cool. I just wish I could figure out why they did some of the things that they did. Mm -hmm. And then people were coming out of the theater going, I loved it. And people were coming out of the theater going, I hated it. And I was like, I totally understand both of you. Like, I totally get it. I think it's a product of a movie that decides to take risks um, involving a very established IP, Mm -hmm. um, established just in everybody's mind, in in different ways in people's minds, established in our culture. And... uh, I totally agree that Ryan took risks that did not work um, and that he there the movie has failures all throughout it. Um, and I think that's just kind of the product of, you know, what happens when someone takes risks. J.J. took very few risks. Mm-hmm. Um, he took some small ones, but really they aren't like he really didn't play with it. In fact, I think he needed to not take risks in order well, to they, mend some the damage. The thing is, though, he abandons his risks as soon as they're presented. So an example... Mm-hmm. There's a part where Kylo Ren at the end says, it, which I got excited about when he goes, no, no more rebels, no more First Order, no Jedi, no Sith. We're done. Like, come with me and rule the galaxy. He's like, what the fuck? Like, he was going on this thing of like, he should have just broke the saber in half and threw it away. But instead he went. No, you'd never do that. He said, well, but. <laughs> He's but, a villain. I, but on it's one hand. Like it's, but a, but you have, like you have him, Adam saying. You have him. You're setting it up where he's saying like, like I, they were doing things that made sense. Where Benicio Del Toro is like. There are no good guys in this. Everyone's in the middle. Or, or it was like, but that's not. I mean, that wasn't true either. See, I, I don't know. Go but ahead. I think. But I think that was the point of Kylo that, was that he needed. He had a twisted idea of yeah, what. Yeah, and I was. I was waiting for someone to say, you know what? Fuck this world of black and white. I'm gonna live in the gray. I'm out. I'm done with this. You people can keep killing yourself. That's what Luke out. was saying. But yeah. then, <laughs> yeah. But then he immediately goes and then join me and his father and son will rule the gas. <laughs> like, you just completely did a 180 mid sentence. I think that's what happened. I think that's part of the. My problem with the movie is it feels like it's at odds with itself. Yeah. It's like it does do those types of things where you're like, oh, this is really cool. But then it falls back into a filmic trope of bad guys versus good guys. Mm-hmm. It shows you the gray, and that, but then it ultimately decides for you that one is bad and one is good because Kylo's well, a bad guy. That's inherent to the Force, too, because it's light and dark. Mm-hmm. There's, no, um, there's no golden hour. Well, in the mm-hmm. force. I'm glad you, you know? said that because it's inherent to humanity. Yeah. And that and that's sort of what it got to me where, where like I knew it's funny because I knew when Kylo was saying, oh, get rid of all this stuff. We need to start over. And I was like, I know exactly what he's going to say, which is I want to rule the galaxy. And the, and the fact of the matter is, is that everybody has their own motivations for doing things. When you said the Toro had money, he uh, he wanted to like Kylo wanted to rule the galaxy. So and Luke wanted to help his friends. And that is just the bottom. That's just the basis of humanity. No one's ever going to say. I will only do what is good for all the whole of humanity because that's not true. That does that's not what actually what happened. Yeah, I just think it. I I understand it being pretty jarring because you're watching it and you're like, oh, oh I'm getting a new unique perspective somewhere within yes. the spectrum. No, nope, yeah. he's Gone. all the way on the yeah. uh, on yeah. the other side. The thing is that unique perspective also at times can contradict both some of the rules that make Star Wars hang together and also philosophically what the show is about. Mm-hmm. Like you guys saying it's it's a very good versus evil show. Heroes are heroes, villains are villains, and there's very little in the middle. Um, and that also relates to the, the dual nature of the force. And also, I think, starts to touch on some of the religious overtones of the show. Um, and what, I, don't, I could be wrong about this, but just anecdotally, I don't remember them calling the Sith or the Jedi religion ever since A New Hope. Hmm. Um, and they did very harshly in this movie. And there's also one particular arc that really sticks out like in my mind. They ran into Benicio del Toro's character in jail. 
And it's like, it's one of those faded happenings that happens because of the force, right? You're down on your luck, but the force, always to which you balance, or because the good guys have to win, is going to make you bounce into someone at the right time in the right place. Like Ben finding Luke when he's about to get killed by Tusken Raiders or whatever. And you're like, oh, the, the, the guy who's going to save the day has been arrived, and he'll win us all with his roguish charm. But he just turns out to be an opportunist, and he sells the rebels all out and ends up way worse. I actually like that. Th I like that, too, but then but, but, it's but, like, but, why but is result, he sitting there in a jail cell for no that. reason? Yeah. Usually well, the excuse is that the force is going to deliver them. It's, yeah. it's worse, okay. too, because there's a, there. there's a negative point to it. Finish your thought, then. Uh, <laughs> To, to have an arc that means that much in Star Wars, not guided by anything, is extremely bizarre for people that are used to narrative dictation driving the entire plot. Because it implies the Force isn't there. Maybe it never was. So what does that mean about the Wait, future so, of Star Wars? So, but, but then you're dictating that the Force can be there, but it has to, it has to be in control the entire time? That's what gets weird about it. It's, it's always in control at the pivotal moments. And this time the Force either... Didn't care enough, and, uh. and a lot of innocent people got killed. Or are they even innocent anymore? Because they're terrorists. Who knows? So it's starting It's starting to, like you guys are all saying, it's it's muddling up what is essentially usually a very neat narrative that has just a little fuzz thrown in for you to wonder about the, the beauty of the galaxy. But now here it's like, well, wait a minute. The beauty of the galaxy can also mean that some asshole sells you and everyone you know out, and they all die terrible deaths. Him just coincidentally being in a prison cell with them, I think it's just the nature of storytelling and film, though. Like any other movie where the force isn't a, an element, to just be like, oh, they're, the heroes are looking for this, and oh, coincidentally they fall into this cell and they find the guy that they're looking for. But I do agree with you, it is a, a broken piece of storytelling. It is like lazy guess, development. Yeah. Um, I mean, just like the way they lazily killed off Admiral Akbar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Unceremoniously. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it, I think that's the thing about it. There are, rules is not the right word, but there's certain conditions that Star Wars itself has set up for it. it there's a lot of Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of Star Wars movies. And unlike, say, James Bond, which reboots itself and its universe over and over again, so that way it can change the rules, mm -hmm. like, Star Wars is literally saying, remember that thing that's from way back then? This is the same world that's from that thing. So it's it's harder to reteach the audience new rules along the way, especially after a movie that is a straight up remake yeah. of another movie with all those rules perfectly in place. Um, I'm glad that it's happening, to be clear. I'm glad that they're taking risks and they're muddling it up, but it's gonna be jarring for the audience. And I feel like the movie did not make itself, sounds bad, but basic enough. Hmm. to slide in those rules. So the movie had certain elements that seem like straight up movie things, straight up Star Wars things, where before they went to the casino planet, they got on a call with Maz Kanata, who is now Rocket Raccoon blasting around. <laughs> Actually, she, that was a nod to the Rocketeer. I looked it up. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fine. And that it's funny because I that's... messaged AJ and he was like, oh yeah, I knew that. That's fine that, <laughs> that's like, fine that Ryan Johnson likes the Rocketeer and turned a character into the Rocketeer. Sure. But like, <laughs> she sets up this character. This is a film thing. You set up, you foreshadow, you set up the character, you build it up, you build it up. And then they don't deliver on that. They yeah. give you something else in its place. Yeah, sounds weird. And well, I told, it's jarring. It's I not would, wrong, but it's jarring. I told I would, you guys, sorry. No, I would say that, yeah, like, uh, for all the, least, the again, I, I've actually not again, but just to make it clear, I actually enjoyed this film. Mm -hmm. um, you speaking, I, you're allowed yeah. to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, well, Adam, well, I thought it was a good film. the petition would say otherwise. Um, <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. I didn't. Cheap. You sometimes yeah, yeah. childish so, humor. I just want to make sure people understand that's the perspective I'm coming from, but uh, the shot of the the real cracker like the <laughs> the oh. code cracker yeah yeah you're a trash yeah, yeah. Like, where is he going yeah. with this? um Justin was Brown. completely took me out of the movie for a moment i went what what just happened well, all you what just happened the problem too is, is he I'm, important i'm not a fucking <laughs> i'm not a fucking screenwriter okay disney doesn't want me trust me they don't want me to help them but even there i was sitting there i was like Waiting for the moment where Benicio del Toro says that he lost his thing in a his in a match. Right. There's there's so many points it feels like in this movie where it's like there's a band aid you can you can just slap a thing on and it'll yeah. fix it and it'll like it'll like make it less jarring. It's a bridge between and those, maybe those in things. the original like three hour cut they had those maybe band -aids. it is that's what yeah. I was once, once again I, know, I think because they I think did cut like, an hour from it yeah I think that was a, a noticeable like oh. I think editing screwed this over. Editing really? is not good in this movie <laughs> because in this perfect example is Leia's uh, space Leia. 
right? Sure. That's a moment that's destroyed by the editing. I, I think actually, again. I like that moment. I, I have too. no problems with the moment. I too. Are there, people really don't like that. Moment. I well, because no it raises questions that don't get answered. Why like, yeah. so is Admiral things. Akbar killed off in such an important <laughs> Listen, way? It's not but crazy see, I don't care to about assume. Akbar. It's not crazy to assume that this force that does all kinds of shit. Like this is what I love about Star Wars. We were watching all the prequels this weekend because they were running a marathon, <laughs> and perfect. the way it all treats perfect. the way it sure. treats the force and what Jedi's can do in that movie is bonkers. Yeah. Is total bonkers. So. I to- I'm totally fine with Leia blasting off into space, sure. but then coming back using the will, the power that she has, but can only tap into in a life or death scenario or whatever. Well, like it's uh, like an old woman being able to lift up the car to get her Hagen Dazs ice cream. Well, that's right. Like it's it's <laughs> that. I don't know how that story goes, no, but okay. I, I have no problems with it. <laughs> sure. At all. That's good. What's jarring is the fact that it cuts away. She gets blasted into space. Oh, I see. It's a really powerful moment, and then it cuts away to the other two stories that it's juggling yeah, for the rest right. of the it movie been, it could have been for, for a questionable amount of time and then returns you to it so you're basically going like is so she's dead or she's not either she's dead and they completely washed over how important that is to the film or i already know she's not dead and so when she comes back it won't be impactful yeah. And then it does come back, and then she slowly wakes up, and then she flies back into the thing. If they had a big moment where it cut to her, and you're like, oh, fucking shit, and Kylo's looking out the thing, and he sees her going out, and now he's wrestling with it, and you hang on that scene. Hold that tension. Note. Hold that tension, but not too long where it breaks, and then she twitches, and then she comes back, and you're like, oh, fuck, Leia's like, got fucking... Like, I think more people would be jazzed about it, as opposed to, like... Oh my God! Did you see what? And now look at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And let me tell you about yeah. this thing. And then and they go, all right. And now let's Act let's, 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 let's okay, so counter argument. Practical Yoda. Oh yeah. I love practical <laughs> yeah. Yoda. Are you kidding me? Yoda Give me practical Yoda. Yoda was probably. I'm just, I'm just totally deterring. Yoda, no, Yoda was one of the best parts of the Frank movie. Frank was yes, doing absolutely. it. Was, it's the well f- written. It's a good part. My only issue with that is once again, it's the movie constantly betraying itself. Where Luke goes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna burn it. I'm done. And then Yoda burns. He goes, What are you doing? You're burning the sacred well, text. I didn't no, really but, want. Yeah, to. but Luke hesitated. I mean, Luke hesitated before he did it. Yeah. Also, so also, obviously he wasn't committed. Then he shouldn't to have it. lit the fire. Also, no. Also, another <laughs> well, thing I would say, <laughs> more ammunition to that point though, Adam, is that Yoda didn't do anything. The implication uh, is that Yoda says you didn't need these books, Luke, except that uh, Ray has already taken the books. Yeah. So Wait, Ray took the book. Yeah, the, yeah, they were, the books are on the, the Millennium Falcon at the oh, end of the movie. Yeah. So it's basically like Yoda said, "You don't need these books." Yoda also, very, I know they're safe. Yoda, Yoda very, very much <laughs> summons that lightning bolt. Well, well, no, wanna, I'm saying he does, he meant, but he, he doesn't meant, destroy the book. Metaphorically, he, he, he knew the books were gone. And and you, the books if you want to talk about bullshit hesitation, the movie, I feel like it tricked the audience when it's like, "Oh, Kylo's hesitating to blow up Leia." when he didn't demonstrate an ounce of hesitation for the rest of it. And in fact, there was a payoff about, no, he wasn't conflicted at all the whole time. I thought that was supreme bullshit thinking back on it. What? So when Kylo's in his fighter, and yeah. he's about to blow up the cockpit of the capital ship, yeah. and he hesitates, because yeah. he knows his mom's on board. But he, for the rest of the movie, Ray, and they do that, so Ray's like, I've seen conflict in you or whatever. And then what? when he sees his chance to take over and kill everyone, he takes it immediately. Mm-hmm. So they're... Well, I thought but the movie I mean, was, was trying to say journey. that was his journey. I would also say, yeah. the but then why did he hesitate to shoot his mom well, when he already killed his dad? That was the point. I like, mean, that, that yeah. was, that it was the point to justify a plot a plot loop that was already written closed later in the movie. I would say uh, that you could yeah, say that was a breaking point. That's, that's like, what I saw. The the whole reason he's so adamant is because I feel like he's like, well, my mom's. There's literally nothing else tying me yeah. to the good in this. He's to, he thinks his mom is dead for the rest of the movie. Right? I think there's I think there is even like a a twist in him upon killing Snoke. That then, almost like an adrenaline boost of yeah. just like he's like, oh shit, I can do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like, and then I don't know, it's weird stuff where like that moment with killing Snoke is awesome. Like that whole sequence, it's great. everything yeah. in that yeah. throne yeah. room Super is cool. fucking so great. Good. But then at the end, you're like, what did that? But then I, I was like, but what was he? Yeah, I have no idea what he was. So just, it's really, it's really interesting. You guys all said so everybody said the same thing to me. Well, Fareed had a great point on this. Okay, what's sorry, Fareed? no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> right, well, you speak, speak, speak for Fareed. Fareed. Yeah, please go, go ahead. No, no, please. I want, I want, I want to. Know you sorry. Well, I, no, I, I was just gonna. I mean, for me, I was just gonna say the guy's been killing people for years now. Kylo he, Ren he, or Snoke? Kylo Ren. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He slaughtered kids yeah, yeah. in the Jedi Temple. So for me, immediately when he was like, when he was like, I'm gonna kill, and then we're gonna join forces. I was like, I know exactly what he's gonna do because he's a murderer. So I know he's going to continue on that path of being a murderer. Mm-hmm. He, and, and even if he hadn't, 
there's no way all the rebels would have been like, you know what, you're forgiven. And I think that's, but I think He's that's... not Magneto. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I think that lends to the jarring nature of the film Absolutely. for a lot totally. of people because 100%. it's saying, it's like he's conflicted. He's a shade of gray. Yeah. And you're like, no, no he's, he's a mass not. murderer. Yeah, he's a murderer. Yeah. Like, so which is, which is it? Well, yeah. so was Darth Vader. Well, let me sell, sell this because Fareed, who knows, I think understands Star Wars better than, than the common man. Um, <laughs> If yeah. Ryan Johnson is selling this narrative, Reed, if you want of, a mic, you can. Yeah. <laughs> no, I will. T- I will tell it on the <laughs> behalf of Fareed. <laughs> Speak on behalf of the Fareed. If you Ryan just stand Johnson, there and make sure is, she he, gets it is right. he there? Yeah. Oh, you tell tell him what you said about. Like, what did I say? Oh, we, oh, well, talking about All right. Come on, okay, we gotta make this official. Momentum, what you're killing it, care? just like Last Jedi. What would she care? About? <laughs> what are we doing? Oh yeah, so like, imagine if the film was everything that. The fan fiction was saying for the last couple of years, oh, she's a descendant of Obi-Wan, everyone. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, Snoke is actually it's Plagueis. Okay. Oh, I knew it. Oh, Finn is, is Force-sensitive. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. it. Yeah. You I think know? It's, I knew it. It's, but it's it's more about... Oh, good. Well, Go he, yeah, t- do your whole thing. Uh, but but I, I think, the you know, the, the whole uh, Yoda just showing up, which was cool, and it was puppet Yoda, so the little fan lore, it was remember, not goes, CGI like Yoda. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> and he calls him Luke in it, which was pretty cool. I think it was, um, and Yoda blowing up the tree. Well, I think you said, uh, you're losing, you're losing you said, focus. You said to me yeah, about, she's things. no one. Yeah, she's, So what she, would she care to know? Yeah, oh, okay, you're Darth Plagueis the Wise. So what? What does that mean okay, to her? What does that mean right. to her? Okay, you have, you, have two, you have two options. You get the, the fan spum theory, which is <laughs> Darth Plagueis, and everyone's going, who's Darth Plagueis? Like, oh, well, if you read the lore. You have to explain it, right? And then you have the the polar opposite end, which is Last Jedi, which is well, like, who gives a fuck? He's dead. The yeah. story of Darth Plagueis appears but, in the new trilogies. Pardon? What? And Darth I think Plagueis. the other thing was... Yeah. Um, yeah, so you don't have to read any. You no, but I... I sure, oh, I he, he's yeah. mentioned... He's no, right. right. he's he's right. mentioned yes. briefly once in Revenge yeah. of the Sith, so but the, the question that lingers, everyone goes, who is the shadowy man we saw in Force Awakens? I hope we get to see more of him. Oh, we do. So much more. He's so powerful. He can... He can do force powers from across the galaxy. He's, he's dragging Hux across the bridge. Wow. who He's dead. I think, so that's the problem. The problem is there are other movies that kind of set a pace. And Force Awakens, the only reason all those fan theories really swirled is because Force Awakens fanned them. Like, they, they have flashes yeah. of Rey in, uh, in Empire Strikes Back and Rey seeing a giant... The only reason people thought her parentage was strange is because she had a flash of her on Jakku and a giant ship leaving her behind. Mm. Who is that ship? What's going on? Like, so I do agree that if they were like, all right, now we're going to take 20 minutes out of this movie to explain who Darth Plagueis is and everything. But you do have to give something. And I, my fear is that they're going to give us that, but it's, that's what all this third movie is going to be. Yeah. It's are, all are they going to flip it and go... But are they going to flip and go, just kidding, Snoke was your dad. Oh, I killed your dad. Well, Fareed's saying, he's saying That's parentage doesn't matter. Again, the, Ryan Johnson subverted Star Wars story. So, go on, Fareed. No, I think it was, yeah, I'll continue <laughs> on Fareed's now. Star Wars I love <laughs> John's face and all this, like... I love it. What's going I, my on face here? is a reaction to Elise's <laughs> apparent like uh, indoctrination into the, the religion of Fareed at this point. Yes, let us speak more about this. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I think it is cool that anyone can be in tune with the force. I don't think that the way they paid it off really made as much sense. The implication being that what? That kid who cleaned the stables was told by whom? Well, he was inspired by the story of Rose and Finn. Uh, Finn and also the fact that they found out about the Luke story. Well, but he's so, he's recreating the Luke he's moment. He's recreating the Luke moment. That's right. So he's from who? He, I, that I don't know. That's <laughs> like, never we like Hux where went back is. and he was like, "You'll never believe what Luke Skywalker did." Yeah. Like, guess, like the only people to share that propaganda would be the Empire well, or the First the, Order. The rebels, I would imagine. But they had well, left. But they were even, They didn't see it. I know. But I'm, like, again, it's kind of one of those things. Like no. it's implied that they knew because they I'm were there. Sorry, it is. But Fareed, it's a, that's all the time we have. It's a weird uh, thing. This, <laughs> thank you. This subject. I'm just saying. This is why it's jarring. No, I think this is why it's jarring. 100%. Yeah. And there isn't a right answer. It's just kind of like you walked away from it going like, man, I fucking love that moment where those kids... Are. I, I like the moment, but at the end, it's the same. Perfect perfect example is the light speed smash. 
The light speed smash it was, is so fucking cool. That's awesome. It looks so fucking cool, and I loved it. I loved it. Sure. And it was a good moment for the character. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as it was over, I was like, wait, hold on. Why hold on, hold why, on. Why haven't they been doing this? Why do they time? need a person to hit that button? We ain't got yeah. the technology to set stuff well, to do oh, yeah. that. Then, like, Well, they also did the thing that I loathe in movies or any sort of trilogy or anything. There we go. Hey, guys, it's me. Happy go bottom. And they're like, hey, new character. How you doing? And then he, he dies at the end. And you're like, well, yeah, I felt nothing for that character. It's like... Uh, but they did it with uh, Game of Thrones. They introduced Ian McShane in one episode, oh, yeah. and he's dead by the end. I'm like, well, I like him as the actor, but I don't really feel much because he's dead. I feel like that's it's a red shirt. I it's, thought that character did plenty. Holdo I throw a wrench. Yeah, into sure, order. but. I was she necessary? I I've already seen people. No, no, no. I was saying Ian McShane. <laughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> no, sure. I know. I like. That. I'm just saying. I hate that. You already have an established world. You could have been. You could have pulled from anybody instead of like. Let's introduce a new character played by Laura Dern, everybody. And like all kids are like, who the fuck is that? Well, the problem is they the movie shit on the movie used Laura Dern to like shit on Poe, but it felt like the movie thought people would really like Poe and want to root for Poe. Mm -hmm. So it shit on her too. And so I think ultimately you kind of walk away from it feeling like, wow, Poe's kind of an asshole. And I also don't like Laura Dern, even though she was trying. She was basically the one saving everyone's life. Right. Well, I, so, I just felt like Laura Dern was a, was kind of a bad leader because she wasn't telling anybody what was going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is like, just trust me. And then and then Poe went off into so yeah. Poe's an asshole. And Laura Dern's incompetent. Every, that's what I'm saying. Everyone's nice. wrong. And to sit there and say that the rebels are good. Who let Fareed in on this podcast? Yeah. He's, he's trying to interrupt. <laughs> Fareed wants to wrench it. He's going to wrench um, it. So I think there's weird stuff. Fareed has some really is sensitive the, Is the... Um, <laughs> You're going to talk about toxic masculinity. You better hurry. Otherwise, I'm going to no, jump no, in and no, talk no, about Phasma. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to go to this. So we know there's a lot of things going on at the same time, and they're showed at like different times in the film. So does the ship... Does the sh Yes. <gasps> does the ship destroy the the you what? know the, the, the big, the major ship? Snoke ship? The Snoke light? ship, or was it when Rey and Kylo split the lightsaber? Who cares? Oh, I see what you're you saying. Know? So it's like, which of the two was it? No, because it, it's no, like, it's the hyperspace space ship. It, or that, the, it's it pretty it, clearly it originated from the ship's point. Like, Wait, hold on, hold on. All those things. You're, you're getting also, that happened on the bridge. You're getting misdirected. The bridge later. Yeah, we're yeah. not yeah. answering. Yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, we I got don't we know. got bigger questions. But hold okay. on, I'm gonna take a quick quick break. Can we do an hour. That's a good thought, though. We can do an hour. That's fine. That's fine. We're gonna do the whole thing. I'm probably putting. And we got Bud Watch at the end. We pre-recorded it last week, but we'll get that in there. So anyway, this episode of Filmhouse brought to you by Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is better than anything that you're wearing right now. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. We've shopped on there online. Easiest thing in the world to do. You click what you want. You put it in the box, basket, cart, whatever your digital item is, and you uh, hit checkout and you're done. Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, underwears, hoodies, and sweatpants that you will ever wear. Bruce, uh, James, myself. I'm Mac Weldon. Right Thank you, John, Lawrence. I, I will be. Freed, what underwear Freed? are you wearing? Show us. No, don't. I only have yeah. two pairs of Mac Weldon. They're my special underwear. They are special. I am also wearing them. Uh, they, yeah, we can all test. They're the finest pieces of clothing we've worn under our other clothing, and sometimes on top of, I sleep in them every night. I wear night. them on dates. TMI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Mac Weldon wants you to be comfortable, so if you do not like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you. No questions asked. I know you're expecting questions, but they're not going to, they're not coming. <laughs> yeah, no, so, put them down, Lawrence. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So not only does Macklin's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well too. They're fantastic for working out. Boys, yes. Worked out in today. I physically can't go to the gym anymore because my body's <laughs> falling apart. But, believe But your underwear isn't. Believe you me. Yeah. <laughs> that was oddly written in the script. They, that's strange, right? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, it even says here in the script, actually, they're good for going out on dates. <laughs> John, <laughs> are they like your uh, lucky underwear? Like They're the, just the underwear that I'm okay with someone seeing me in. Anyway, uh, so we we love Mac Weldon over here. You should too. So please support them, support us. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first order, or maybe it's not even your first order. It's just using a promo code. Like the Empire. <laughs> wow. Hey, get 20% off using uh, <laughs> use the code Film. I thought this was your first order. Maybe it's just any order. Shit, I wanna I wanna order some. Anyway, yeah, check it out. Please, MacWeldon.com. Slash, uh, use the promo code film. That's it. 20% off. Super simple. Anyways, get back to, uh, Last Jedi. What, what so part do you guys want to There's certain things cry that, about. So, I, like, there's, <laughs> there's almost an explanation for everything, but then there's certain things. We talked about this with the, uh, net neutrality, where it's like, just trust the corporations. Like, mm. but there's a long resume of me not being oh, able yeah. to trust you. I think Phasma is a pretty good example of, like, 
this is why I'm a, I'm a little concerned. Or this is why I didn't... The way Phasma got shit on in Force Awakens. In Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Hard shit on. After all the marketing, which I get it. We're at a point now, too, where... Disney and Star Wars executives identify that the guy running with the ice cream maker is going to is be, gonna be a character right, in yeah. the movie as opposed right. to some guy running with an ice cream maker. That's just how Star Wars is picked apart. So they're like picking the, they're like making those characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that guy at the casino is supposed to be made into a character oh. so they can sell a trading card or whatever of him and imply how sure, much. Sure. Um, but uh, Phasma is a character who just got sold so high this like standout soldier in an army that's all about conformity and then and rewarded for it and then got shit on the first movie she sold out everyone on that planet and then basically led to the destruction of she was basically a coward she got knocked down the garbage chute or something so then she comes back (laughs) she comes back in this one she comes back in this one and to do what Nothing. Get absolutely shit on again. Yeah. No yeah. one can figure her out. I mean, John is right. He figured out Hux, yeah. but still yeah. wasn't able. It's to so figure weird. Out. It's so, and that's why I. That's these are the moments that I'm like, ah, man. I just wonder. Do you like? Are you guys at odds with what to do? Is someone telling you you need a phasma, and you're just like, there's no room in the script for the phasma? Well, just, it felt like there was a lot it of things. Be. It set. could very well be. It could be that because that's how you make movies these days. Well, it feels like yeah. things were set up in Force Awakens that we all went, man. That phasma character, pretty interesting. Didn't get a lot of screen time. Be great if she gets a, a, a scene. Oh, they killed her. Like, same thing with Snoke. They? They, yeah. I, no, she's yeah. not dead. She's not I, dead. I, I There's she's no way. Dead. 100% not dead. But then, no. it's, but then at this point, it doesn't matter. If she comes back and does something cool, you're like, all right, now you get the shiny armor, Phasma, yeah. because this right. is the first thing you've accomplished. Well, also, she's, <laughs> she's going to die. Ironically, she's going to die in episode nine, I bet. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably. And then after getting yeah. shit on for two movies, she's going to get shit What's on again. What's she going to turn? Yeah, like, yeah. die. Stop yeah. right there, Rick. <laughs> Yeah. Where's the Phasma standalone film that we all need? So I'm, I'm sure they're gonna fucking make one. I'm pretty no, confident. Test well enough. I'm, I'm pretty confident in the fact that I can answer all of your Last Jedi questions. Oh, okay. I have a question. So ask me any question, and I'm pretty sure. Like about like okay. lore stuff. Uh, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Any of it. Okay. Okay. Want, because okay. Who the, is Snoke? The, so so Snoke. We're all we're all gonna say is Darth Plagueis, right? Yeah. No. Basically, no. I'm just gonna say like. That's what we I think. Will. I'll Speculate say it for you. in the yes. fact that so he's gonna come back to life. He's in the Darth next Plagueis. One. I would be very surprised if they don't pay him off in episode nine. I'm betting that there's going to be something about Snoke. If there isn't, I'll be very surprised. Just, uh, but that's that's my theory on the whole thing. Okay, that's a theory. but that's you need to be answers. careful with that. That, that, <laughs> that is my factual answer. The thing is, is that wait, what you to say? I have I have a question what? about lore. Hold on, before that, <laughs> the the thing about the Snoke though is that the movie still shits on him too. Like right away. like right away. which is fine. He's powerful. He's awesome. He gets split in half. And I was waiting for the moment where he comes back together. Me too. And then it was going to be did. it was going to be fucking awesome, did. right? He did. He did. But yep. and that's okay. You could just walk away from that scene and then come back later. And he's like, I re- in the next movie, <laughs> I repaired myself. Yeah. But the movie makes a point of showing a close up of his out. face, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. like he just like like lost a fight to like ten <laughs> kindergartners and like is lying on the ground in a heat. He looks like the sloth from Ice Age too. He looks yeah. like yeah. 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 and it's like it's like Sid all right, the sloth. But, they, but, but now they, you've diminished that character just shame. a little bit, and so it's going to be harder to pay him but off they, again. They set so much up with it, and they're like, they okay, physically you have questions. Metaphorically, you yeah, have questions. Yes. Yeah, like sexually. Just based on, yeah. I was gonna say, how big is? Dom? So, well, <laughs> like, I, I remember being like, "Can he even walk?" Okay, he can walk. Good. Like, there's a part where he stands. I'm like, maybe he has robot legs. I don't know. I had all these yeah. questions, and then just gone. Well, so the so what, I, what I should say about all these questions, I can answer for you. Okay, is that I don't think the movie itself pays off all of these questions that you guys have. That's the problem with the movie. Mm. Is that when you watch the movie, you got all these questions, and then for me, I'm sitting there filling them in in my head. Being like, oh, Snoke is this, and Ray is this, and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. I think I know the reason why. But I've read 70 Star Wars books, mm-hmm. right? Um, so that's a problem. That's a problem for any other movie going on. Do they ever explain how bombs drop in space? No. Magnets. And also, by the way, there are explosions in space. It's one of the things that yeah. no, you everybody... No, you Star Wars. Though. I'm just no, saying when they're, like, Star Wars. they're like, drop the bombs in zero G. Well, <laughs> it's like, but, but, if they had little rockets... Maybe, maybe they push. Maybe they push. Well, so here's the, here's the problem with that, Adam, is that you eventually, at some point, got to yeah. suspend your disbelief no, and be like, no, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. That one no. didn't really bother me. No, no. I thought actually that scene that was, was a pretty... Moment. Moment. I that was a great moment. She kicked yeah. it Two too many times though. I got a She kicked it like six times. She probably should have... She probably kicked it once... 
twice, really grab the thing, question. kick it. Oh, I see That's yeah. what, and the same with so Hux and the bridge. Mine. The prank phone call was a great moment. I oh, know some I, people I, hate I, it. I, I loved oh, it, I loved but it. they pranked him one too many times. No, so I, I saying, actually have something to ask related to the prank phone call. Yeah. Because it's of my opinion that the humor in the movie was at times really well executed. I enjoyed it. And delivered really well. I like the Porgs a lot. I, I like the ports too, and I, I thought a lot of the jokes played really well. I thought that starting it with the setting the tone for the humor mm -hmm. with that call was a big mistake, and they oh, really yeah. needed to do. Really, I think th I think they needed to do it. a one liner or something before that to say, "Hey, there, are, we've got jokes. This is a little bit more lighthearted. There are jokes in this. Mm -hmm. They just needed like a one liner or something before they did a bit." Huh. That's you know, fair. that I was just, my, and I, so I wanted to ask you guys what your it, thoughts were, just, opinions on the humor. Which is weird the of them doing like 21st century phone humor. It was. It felt at a place Strange. where he's like, I'll hold. Like, do they hold in this universe? Yeah. I guess they hold. They yeah. needed to do some simpler, yeah, exactly goof, one note like, goofy uh, things before trying to do it, a bit. It, a whole I'll, bit. <laughs> I'll just say it took, it took me out of it. I went, huh. It's, see, it's interesting. It, it uh, got me in. So, and the reason it got me in is because I knew I was watching a Star Wars film. And so when I got that, I was like, Oh, this is a, this is a different movie. This is mm -hmm. a different Star Wars film because I was expecting a Star Wars movie. And when I watched The Force Awakens, I got literally everything I expected. And I walked out of the movie going, "Oh, okay." And then I watched it again and went, "Boy, this is kind of boring." And then, then the next time I watched it, it was boring, <laughs> boring, more boring. And, and eventually, I didn't like the movie anymore. Mm -hmm. And so with Last Jedi, it's exactly the opposite. The last Last Jedi, the second time I watched it, I was like, "I like this movie more." Because I actually, because all my expectations have been subverted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And, but that's again, that's I am not the regular did, movie did going the, on. Did the the dog racetrack thing not just feel very prequely to you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. The, the, I think the Finn Rose uh, storyline was just like the in Battleship. They should have cut the whole thing out. We, yeah. I fucking hated that. We thing. talked about it though, and it sucks because they think it was a missed opportunity. Big movies like this are really hard to make. A lot of lot of moving parts. Sure. I think that a better version of that, instead of introducing a new character that is immediately set up to be unqualified to do any of the things she does for the rest of the movie, right? I disagree. Um, and so, I mean, like in terms of the role of her world, she's okay, like cleans yeah, yeah. the toilet. Oh, I thought you she's meant like, just I cleaned the toilet of... down here, <laughs> and then she's flying into the battle at the end. <laughs> she was also um, introduced as an awkward millennial, which is a character trait that is an immediately scrubbed. The from thing, her the thing is, like, but, hold on, can I? Can I? I I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, just because she cleans the toilets doesn't mean that she wasn't like a trained sol soldier that was just assigned with cleaning the that's, toilets. That's a good point. That's fair. They should set that up and pay it <laughs> off somehow. She um, said, "I work behind pipes." That's what she yeah. um, and well, so, she, well, we, we also just saw her sister die, so I was like. Oh, you're, she goes, my sister's dead. She was the hero. I clean shit. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Also, not to say that soldiers aren't allowed to cry, but her reaction to a bunch of people is like, my sister's dead. And she's crying alone in the bottom of the ship. That doesn't inspire, like, a Captain America type. I may just be a small thing, but I have great potential. But she picked herself but back up. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> that, Wipe I, the shit off her. That moment, that moment, I feel like that whole B story could have been a lot better if it was Poe. Oh, yeah, and yeah, Finn, yeah, yeah. Yes, yep. yeah. because then you get Poe off the ship, so he isn't just moping I the agree. whole time. I agree. Yeah. He goes down, he's already got this heroic vibe, and he's talking about rushing into things and doing things that are brash or whatever. He could have done Finn it. Finn yeah. has to be the one to tell him that he, like this world you see, there's a whole group of people that are suffering beneath it. It didn't, it blew my mind when there was a scene where she was explaining to Finn, the child soldier, enslaved from birth into. <laughs> fighting in an army for a war that he may have no fight in whatsoever, right? That sometimes kids have it hard. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's such a weird moment, mm -hmm. and I wonder why they didn't have him saying that to someone else. Yeah, if you had had him saying that to the kids on the planet, and with, if it was him and Poe, then right. there, you have that catharsis for but him. But you have this and then cringe you have moment. At the end. <laughs> then Poe saves him. I would have been okay with that. Like, I mean, then Finn, yeah, you're right. I thought like they were going to be a couple, honestly. Thinking yeah, sacrifice is sometimes <laughs> necessary, still is trying to fly into the thing, or even vice versa, maybe. Maybe Poe misinterprets that the lesson he's learned is that he needs to put himself at greater risk and as opposed to the people around him, but that's not the actual lesson. And then Finn is the one who crashes him out of the way, yeah. saving him from sacrificing his life because it's not worth it. You have a greater potential to lead mm -hmm. and all this stuff, and then they kiss. Mm -hmm. Then, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that pays off Is the moment think, better. Kissing his? Uh, yeah. Well, he's also like unconscious a little bit, so he's got to like kind of open his work, mouth. Yeah, well, work and the way that, their bodies land, goes, their tips you, touch back. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, that being said, maybe Oscar wasn't available 
And so they had to rework yeah. it. I don't know. It's, I just that's yeah. true. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's easy for me to say this is the better version of yeah. that. But I, just, I don't uh, know. I want to get more Bruce questions. No, in. please go oh, ahead. Sorry. Answer. Lawrence had a question. No, yeah. I, John's been waiting the longest, right? No, no. I <laughs> think he had it was a question Lawrence about Lawrence. I, I, I can answer the hypothetical. It's, it's about uh, <laughs> the Red Guard in Snoke's yes. room. Uh -huh. yeah, was those? there armor like lightsaber resistance? Yes, it was. One hundred percent. Okay, and so like basically it was weak spots and like piercing. That's existed. That's existed before. Yeah, and I've heard of that. It's existed. It's deflected blows i noticed that yes. yeah well. but but every, but every time it, it actually struck it was like at weak points or it was like a full-on just like yeah, it was straight it, it, it's remember, like it's like armor it, well, like it could penetrate if you get like a full slash right. in there well, but it would ding off what about what about through the helmet and force that, yeah. well, that, that was right through that. <laughs> point blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah but force awakens that uh what's his name finn uh, fought with the lightsaber fought the uh the guy with the remember the the battery yeah yeah with the weapon or like that yeah yeah so that's yeah. that, 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 no, 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 i'm not thing. i'm not saying that couldn't exist i was just yeah. i was like i think this is i think i saw the lightsaber I, deflect off it a few I, times uh, that kind uh, of thing you did. that that was the Question. one scene i had the oh. least amount of issues with. he's jumping in um yes go ahead Freed. uh are the guys are is the guard the knights of ren Oh, good question. Very um, sensible opinion. This is all speculation. Uh, I don't necessarily think that they are. I don't think so. Um, because I, it's that makes a lot of sense. It makes though. that scene a lot more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he killed it does. All of them. Well, it. see, that's this is the problem with the movie, though. Like we've said, is that they're they're setting up so many different things that they have to either knock down in episode nine or just avoid entirely. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lore question. Were you also disappointed by all the flashback scenes? Um, He's loading that question. No, yeah. <laughs> I I wasn't. I don't know why. Why, why were you disappointed I mean, with the flashback? Because I. I would have liked to see more than, like, man, what has Luke been up to? Uh, condensed down to him in a hut for one moment, <laughs> where it's like, like, gee, I wonder what happened after Return of the Jedi. Maybe there's a maybe a shot of him setting up shop. Well, maybe theoretically, there's meeting a young there. a you young Ben Solo, ben but yes. instead it's it's just one scene <laughs> of him like on a soundstage. With a thing crumbling him going, nah, my tampon. And it's like, <laughs> no, but what was he doing? <laughs> like, he was training them. I'm pretty never got to see that. Well, no, well, I just mean, didn't like, get to see I'm just saying, like, I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, what a waste of a flashback. In Adam's defense, though, there's a lot of movies that set him up for wanting to see what he wants to see. Well, right. So this movie had too much set up? I mean, it's Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's an, an unavoidable consequence of making a Star Wars movie. I and maybe think. the hour that got cut did help. I, I, I do think it was. A I'm, I'm serious. There's an hour that got cut. I did think yeah. it was a little. The original cut was three, yeah. uh, three hours. Oh, well. yeah. I'd like to see that. I think I actually. I think a Star. I would take more of this. There's not a lot of movies where, like, we that's saw cool. Justice League, oh, and no, if no, they no, said there's a director's cut of Justice League, it's three and a half hours. I go, no, thank you. But if there was a longer version of this, I totally love to watch it. Um, but I think also to Adam your point, like. It was kind of weak sauce. After everything we've seen Luke deal with, I agree, yeah. the fact that like some like he basically dealt with the same thing that happened to this is an obscure reference, but Karate Kid too. A hurricane <laughs> comes swinging through at the end, and like a hut falls on a guy, and Daniel just picks up the hut and carries the people out. Like, yeah. and he survived, yes, but it was enough for him to be like, ah, I'm covered in dry leaves well, no, but that's not and true. wood. His temple was uh, demolished, and all of his tr all of his students were killed. Yeah, right. no, so but I mean, he like, would have loved to see that, Bruce. No, it would have been cool. I look, I look, I don't disagree with you on that. I'm just saying for Luke being knocked like you've defeated me, Kylo Ren. Well in a battle of wits. I, well, also, I think that they were they were trying to speak to the fact that Kylo Ren was really extremely powerful. Yeah. That's what I got. That's, was it? that's fine. I got that, but it was like we had I, I I would have taken 75% less dogs running around uh, the city of uh, <laughs> like whatever. Animals. Trust me, I, I would have too. And, <laughs> and if they would have just... Canto? If they would have just... Canto Bite, yeah. Canto yeah, Canto Bite. If they would have just done just a little bit more of like Luke being like, I was I was lost and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then Obi-Wan and uh, uh, Yoda. Yoda and my dad all came back and they're all like, son, <laughs> go to the temple. I was like, whoa, cool. And Mace Windu was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just saying like if they would have showed something, but, but in, instead we, we got like so, so much more so that I don't think anyone wanted. Easy to imagine <laughs> that being a positive, but in a different movie they may have had that and then we'd be complaining about how terrible this young CG Mark Hamill yeah. looked. You know, so. I think the, the version they had of him was fine. I thought he looked good, yeah. I, I think, no, I'm just saying. I think I'm they could have, once again, to your point, could have been an easel, and I don't want to keep doing a bunch of, it would have been yeah, cool yeah, if. Yes, we can't write our, we can't write our own movie. But it could have been just a simple like, I wandered around like studying the Jedi ways and then I realized I need to start a new, I need to start a new order. And then, there you go. You got yeah. his, his cool, his, his dyed Billy Mays beard, and we're ready to go. Me as a Star Wars fan, I, uh, I that's what I had. Like, mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, I know what he did. Mm -hmm. He left yeah. and, and started a temple, and then it, it exploded. 
So like that was so for me at the very when it exploded, he gave up. And another, that's that's all I had. I another was, another lore question. Yeah. So there's the really cool part where Ray's defining the. Uh, yeah, Lawrence definitely I don't, has a question. I don't, I don't, no, she, she's she's, de- she's defining. Mine's going to be pretty broad. She's, she's defining the force. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then he goes, "You went right to the dark side. I how did, you, you'd even hesitate. Anyway, next lesson." Yeah. Like <laughs> he only had in his defense, he had about six hours to teach her everything yeah. there is to know about Jedi's and the Force. But then so. like Yoda says she already knows everything. Yeah. Well, y- Yoda. That's I mean, not really. Yoda didn't say he, he said she, she already, has the foundation. She, he, yeah. he said yeah. The, the books you know, don't have anything she doesn't already. And, and, yeah. And, and for me, that was kind of an interesting point because I was more talking about books. I liked that. I, well, I, li- I like the fact because it was like basically it's like you're reading the Bible. Yep. But then you're thinking to yourself, well. If you have any moral compass, you have a good heart. You kind of know what the you Bible's going to say, right? To know the morality. Yeah. So. It's all, but it's also weird though, given the context of Star Wars, yeah. where it's like Anakin, he's just naturally good with the Force. Oh. But and, and what did Yoda say before? This is bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is trouble. <laughs> like, like, and you go, hey, there's Kylo Ren. He's just naturally attuned with the. He's well, great at but the that's Force. But that's where that cycle plays out. That's where Luke's at in that point in his life. And yeah, Yoda's I know. Transcended even beyond that. But that actually speaks to the fact that Yoda knew. Yeah. Yoda knew Anakin was going to go bad and Rave was going to go good. Bruce, well, where were all the? Womp- yeah, I know, but Bruce, so. where were the womp rats? <laughs> I didn't notice any. It's just, it's no weird. zero bullseyes in this movie. <laughs> it's, it's weird to think that they this movie would tell you that anyone born from anything can be with the force. Sure, yeah. But it leaves out the parenthetical that says, but you may be bad or good. No, but that's, well, but that, in my opinion, that's just the journey of, of life. That's just free will. So for me, like that's that's the way I've always looked at Star Wars or anything else. It doesn't matter what power you have or, or power you don't have. You either go good or evil or in between, it, and then you sort of decide the, the a, a number of choices get you down that it, road. And I just think, but I'm just saying back to it being jarring. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Yes. Greatest I'm not heroes of cinema. Yeah. Han Solo and Leia, right? Their offspring is a bad guy yeah. because why? And the movie seems to say because he decided to be mm-hmm. at some well, point. Well, he says he says it's a throwaway line because Snoke already got to him. How? Where? When? We don't know. Boys locker room. So I it's, don't it's, know. It's, well, the thing is, like, I found the Jedi like, Temple how? with my best friend Jake Snoke, and you're like. Oh, oh God! Yeah, oh, he was. Oh, yeah. wow! <laughs> anything. Well, yeah, yeah, so I think no. we called him Plaguey. It was a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I think that's why it's jarring, though, right? Because yeah. there's like yeah, right. there's this, there's a history there, and it's hard. Well, like, it's so, hard. I think I honestly think the Ryan inherent Johnson problem didn't... is soft retconning by Ryan Johnson and a, a yeah. incohesive yeah. lack of vision across. Writing and movies. Which, right, that's really yeah, yeah. Wrong. But in Ryan yeah. Johnson's defense, it's fucking hard. It's oh yeah, very, absolutely. It's really fucking it's so, hard. Really fucking well, hard. Like, <laughs> like, like I said, like I'm not answering these questions because I think you guys are wrong. No, yeah. I think the movie's not not the hottest because of these questions. Like it, it's it's unfortunate that you have to ask me and I'm trying to guess. You know, like that's a that's a problem. I, Lawrence, I think Lawrence, Lawrence has a question. question. I want to hear Lawrence's All right. question. Lawrence's question. All right. Uh, and, it, and it kind of relates to my analysis of why people are potentially so upset by this. So for me, Star Wars has meant a couple of things. And they're very intense bullet points. One, it's the stories of heroes and villains. And that, that is the dude going off to save the day. It's, it's Han knocking out the, the shields by himself, maybe with a couple of like red shirts with him. But it's, it's powered, powerful, named, strong characters that go and do the right thing. Um, and this movie undoes that, or at least says that's not what it's about. Uh, it's also about, well, because Poe's whole storyline is stop going off on your own and being a hero. You're fucking it up. Yeah, but there are other storylines that don't work that way. Um, well, that's and and that's to the movie's own inconsistency. But there are there are some strong points the movie makes that to me stand opposite to everything Star Wars has stood for coming up to now. Sure. Um, one of those heroes. One is that the Force, for the right people, the Force will help them out. And to me, I think that's a pretty strong link to religion in general. Hmm. To the extent that oh, the smugglers in in the prison cell. He ha- the the girl with the right shaped necklace made out of a con- uh, like a. Uh, conducive material was there exactly when he needed it for them to open the door. And so much of that says, oh, the force has embraced you and you're under its protection. It's guiding these steps. You're going somewhere you need to go. Right. Oh, by the way, all your friends are going to die because he just happened to be the wrong person. So in that sense, it's also kind of saying that even if you're, a good for, if you're a good person and things seem to be going right for you, that doesn't mean that the force is behind it or that it's all to a plan, you know? Uh, yeah, and I, I completely agree, Lawrence. It pays into free will in one way, but also is very upsetting for people that like to believe the galaxy or the universe or even our lives are pl- are being attended to by some larger power. Well, so so the problem is, is that and this, and this is what actually what I wanted from this movie was that I wanted the movie to address the fact that the force isn't black or white. It is not one side or the other. It's gray. 
And uh, they've they've addressed that in the Clone Wars a number of times. There's a really cool thing that's like a three episode arc in the Clone Wars you should watch. Um, that's a, I know, I know, I know. Again, these kidding. are things that nobody else it's has. It's very popular. Uh, um, but re but regardless, <laughs> like uh, I was hoping that the movie would address that. It tried. Lawrence is right. It failed in in that Finn and Rose well, uh, storyline all almost all the way around. But they, I mean, they specifically go to the way. There's a moment where Luke says, "Like, do you feel all that in the Force? And now you know why no one should touch it. Like, leave it be." And I, was, I thought that was a good moment where it was like Luke did the opposite of what I think anyone was expecting him to, but it had no payoff. It was him saying force. The force is a thing. We shouldn't meddle in it. It's not ours to meddle in. And then at the end, he goes, I'm going to meddle until I disappear. Well, see, for me, that's that just spoke to the fact that he was scared. <laughs> um, sure. and, and, and for me, he was a coward. He and, and that was that's the thing that for when Luke was like, oh, man, like crazy island, all these crazy porgs and crazy uh, alien nuts. I didn't care because he was crazy. Like he had lost it. Uh, he and obviously, any any like in in some cases, some people would have lost. Like Give him that green titty milk. He was a broken man. He was a broken man. And and for me, so when he was like, like Ray, that. stay away from it. That wasn't a lesson. That was me looking and seeing flaws in Luke. Mm -hmm. it, like that wasn't yeah. like Luke telling you the Bible. That yeah. was Luke yeah. being a fuck up. It was like mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson saying, like the heroes you thought were infallible are not infallible. And yeah. Yeah. Don't meet your he heroes. That in the film, when he gives his his own narrative of who he is, he says, the great legend. Like, look what I've become. I'm, this thing doesn't make me perfect. I'm a failure, I'm right? A failure. And, oh, and so, so I, I liked. I actually liked that. I liked the fact that they showed that, and then eventually he was like, Ah, shit! I really actually should be decide to be the person that I I was before. So. Bruce, you've seen it more than once? Twice, yeah. And Adam, you've seen it more than once? So I saw it once, walked out of the theater thinking I didn't really care for it. So, saw it the second time. I was I enjoyed it much more the second time, but I spent two-thirds of the movie in the bathroom throwing up. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't quite get to my question. Yeah, please. The okay. question is, Bruce, oh, what does okay. Star Wars mean to you now? That, oh. that was it. I didn't actually ever oh. ask it. So. Oh, um, yeah. I, Star Wars didn't change for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was so like like James was talking about with the throne room scene, and Adam, Adam did a really great job of predicting that... Uh, Ray was going to, or uh, Kyle was going to try and turn Ray and kill Snoke. Um, I was like, wow, Adam was almost spot on on that whole thing. I just wish he had joined him. But see, I knew what was going to happen. I knew that that couldn't happen. And the fact that it yeah. could, and the reason, it, I'm not saying it couldn't happen in a Star Wars universe. It just generally couldn't happen anywhere. Because if they were trying to tell a story about Ray being the good guy and uh, Kylo being the bad guy, they're not going to be like, Ray and Kylo join together. I, and then the old man Luke fights them. Like, they're not going to do that. Well, I, I so, it, I, so I knew what was going to happen. Plus, he was a fucking murderer. But what if what if they <laughs> both what if they both said, we're done? This is a, this is a fight that's going to keep going on forever, and we want no part of it. That Well, first of all, that, that's contrary to all of human history, number one. <laughs> I mean, but um, they, they would have been the ones breaking the cycle. But, but, but that, they, that wouldn't, was, they wouldn't have because other people would have fought them. Like, and see, that's what then I'm trying. Then they start the third faction. <laughs> <laughs> and now we see, got a Starcraft situation coming. So, so for me, it's like the it's like the whole you know in the future how Star Trek is like a uh, the perfect um, human civilization where nobody has any money and everybody can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But then Romulans come in and Klingons come in. Like it's just always going to be that way. That's just it sucks. I'm sorry, humans suck. No. Uh, that's the way that's the way it's going to be. So for me, I always knew Hilo was going to be bad. I just because he's a murderer. They're not going to forgive him, and he killed a bunch of kids. Like they're not, they're not going to be like, you know what, buddy, you're right. Why but, don't you lead us? But don't you <laughs> don't you like to Lawrence's point? He said earlier. Vader. Yeah, Vader was. Luke forgave uh, Vader because he was his father, and that's, that's kind of fucked up. And, 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 and that's think well, about the most powerful man in the galaxy protecting the most genocidal man in the galaxy. Right. Well, but he forgave him, but that doesn't mean he didn't hold him accountable for his crimes. Mm. Um, I mean, it seems Ray seemed to have a pretty good, like, knowledge of. Everything that had happened, and she was like, "You, you, you turned your father to the light side." So, like, the stories have been told; everyone knows it. So, Luke was well, clearly bragging. What if they were just legends, though, from other people? I mean, it doesn't does matter if it's but right. They, but I mean, that's that's, that's the, insane. That's the story, though. They like, have an accurate depiction of what happened. It wasn't yeah. the great hero Luke Skywalker slayed the villainous Vader. It was the great hero Luke Skywalker turned. warmed the heart yeah. of Vader, sa saved him. I mean, I guess that's a better story, but it's still like. It's yeah. not the comeuppance, I guess. Yeah, and, kind but, of what's and, being discussed. You yeah, know? And I guess yeah. it also sort of contradicts. I guess where I, I was confused where Kylo was in Force Awakens because he was sitting there talking to his grandfather's helmet. Because I thought he still. I thought the legend was oh, that see, Vader died as a villain, and so everyone remembered him as a villain. I was like, that makes sense. So well, he didn't die as a hero. I mean, the like they yeah. seem to set it up that he was somewhat forgiven. Just that, the, the well, rules are assumed. Well, I think I, that everyone in Star Wars has seen Star Wars. 
but only Star Wars. Interesting. That's, a, that's, that's a, how everyone seems to act. That's an interesting point. So that's that's hmm. the assumption that I was rolling with because it also makes sense for the audience that if you want to believe you're in that universe, everyone there has heard the stories as they're told. So I don't know, but yeah, that's very inconsistent. Uh, again, the, forgiving someone and then forgetting what they did is are two t entirely different things. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, yeah. we, uh, Vader's lucky he died because otherwise he would have been on trial for the murder of millions, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they would have killed him. Yeah. Well, so I mean, it's because well, I remember in the books they name uh, Ben Solo's character would have been Anakin Solo, right? Yeah. Don't they do oh, that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is right. also like the sort of like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like naming your kid like Adolf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgive oh. you. <laughs> A little late off. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, John Reisinger, you've seen it twice. I've seen it twice. You haven't seen it a second time yet. No, I've only seen it once. So, I, I have a fun question for you guys, because um, did you pick up the second time you watched it, how the fact that there are no Luke footprints on the pl on the red planet? Okay, because I didn't notice it all the first time, and, and I didn't think of it, and then I was reading that. I, it's, it's, really, it's really cool you say that, because I saw it the first time. And then I immediately started thinking back to that scene and go like, all right, I can't, I'm going to look for this the second yeah. time I watched it. Because he doesn't get touched by lightsabers. Uh, his footprints don't appear in the in the salt and all that other stuff. The only problem with that is, and I, I can't even answer this question, how did he put the dice in Leia? <laughs> like, how did he interact with Leia with the dice in her hand? Like a spit. Spit thing after well, he kisses her on the head. I think spit. it's just an they, they, <laughs> they actually, they actually, uh, yeah. that was less of a problem because there was a moment too where. Kylo and Ray were connected, up. and he, his hand was wet. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, so they can. They set that up. Pretty right. Okay, good. All right, good. I get it. A right. Super, super powerful good. Jedi can project something. Okay, I can live with that. That's Physical fine. manifestation. It's a, it's a new force power I've never seen before. That's cool. That's fine. My my issue walking away from all of this uh, is unlike Bruce, Star Wars no longer feels special to me. Oh wow! Wow! Jeez! Oh, like this wow. was the movie where I was like, is this going to be the thing that I'm looking forward to every two years? And the Rogue yeah. Ones and the Han Solo movies, I'm going to go whatever. This one now I'm like. Meh. Let Kill me your heroes, this. baby. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, let that's let me pilot. forget let everything me pose you this. loved. Because this is how I, I've never like I've always loved going to see Star Wars movies and theaters. I like I watched all the prequels knowing they were bad, but still going like it's Star Wars it's time of year. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's just something that I get. It's an event. It's right? an event. Yeah. Let me just pose this to you because this is something I was thinking about as someone right on the middle of the fence watching both sides argue while just thinking like, oh, I enjoyed sitting through that. Right. Star Wars is now a genre of film. It's not, it's not, it's just its own genre. And there are going to be movies for the rest of time. You got to prepare your asshole for this. <laughs> for the rest of time that are just the genre Star Wars. And to fulfill this genre, like you'd fulfill a Western or yeah, anything yeah. else, there's going to be good versus bad and the vagueness of it being in between. Maybe not there's, in Ryan Johnson's new trilogy. What? Maybe oh, not yeah. Ryan Johnson's new trilogy. I Maybe, we'll see. But I still think it's like to be a Star Wars film, you can have these elements. Like rebellion versus something yeah. something large, a large government force, mm. and then spaceships. <laughs> like basically. Right. Star, yeah, space like, battles. Yeah. Like, so like Star Wars is now a genre. Right. My, my, my problem with that is no one's asking the interesting questions. Like, I, I just like, we fast forward to... Uh, rebels are still a thing. Um, First Order is a new thing. Republic's a thing. For Republic's gone now. First Order's going after rebels. Why are rebels? Like yeah. I'm just. I, see I, I don't like it. It's so weird of me like walking out. Like I saw someone being like, I thought you guys didn't want politics and Star Wars. Like I actually kind of want it now because hmm. I have a lot of questions. I I think that you may. Uh, come to appreciate this movie more over time because I do think that this film is kind of breaking it's in it's in at odds with itself Let's try but it. I do think this film is trying to break some of those things so that way we can get Star Wars movies that do surprise you down the road it's just not happening today yeah. I think this movie is trying to set a foundation for that there, this film is so different in just its sheer scope of time passing like it's it's the only star wars movie that happens immediately back up against the previous one weird, yeah. and it happens in like a couple days yeah, it does. which is yeah. really different too so you're not getting into those big politics that are spanning you know a, a year's worth of time that all like these debates these, happen all, yeah all these things are in motion because it is a really Misa said, um, it's cool. you know basically like <laughs> a, a movie a, a day in the, in the life of star wars kind of thing <laughs> Um, which is why it's, it's sort of like Rogue is, One in that way. This is the quantum um, of solace of Star Wars films. Yeah. It kinda, it kinda, uh, that kind of yeah, is, that's actually. That's a, that's a, <laughs> except oh, for that. way better than Quantum of yeah. Solace. Yeah, I, I think so. Listen, oh, I like I, all those movies. Funny, I, like, I, I like both of those movies. <laughs> I like Quantum of Solace and Last Jedi. It's just, it's just, 
Why would you make a movie about an uh, epilogue? They also, uh, they're not using those weird wipes as much anymore, either. Oh, there were plenty of wipes. There were plenty of wipes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, like them, though. I like them, too. I think they're cheesy, and they're they're. it's a reminder that this is all very 70s sci-fi, yeah. and this movie had a lot of that in it, uh, visually speaking. But yeah, there was only, like, one one wipe, and I was like, that was weird, and that was really fast. There's a few. You know, it's hard to catch them, because yeah. they actually do yeah. some subtle ones. There were some that were just, like, a it. ship going across. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no one's talking about that it's a new Chewbacca actor. Oh, oh yeah, because Peter oh, Mayhew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, Chewbacca and the Porgs I loved. I thought they were well, okay with that. So it's odd. Great. The Porgs, uh, in a movie where a lot of things didn't didn't apparently do anything, the Porgs did nothing. I mean, they, were they were adorable. I know. Remember but they, when they, they had, had to sell toys? Even they were the Ewoks cute AF. I think it's interesting. But people hated that they did stuff. Someday. I know. So it, it's weird, right? Like it's, uh, in as much as you want to chop I it like up to Ewoks. more rules that, that, that this movie huh. uh, intentionally broke. I've the seen the movies. Were just there. Yeah. I, think, I think there's like there's a Lawrence is right. <laughs> they're, they're, again, they're, they're, these things don't have narrative, um, you know, purposes. Mm. But if you watch like Indiana Jones and other Star Wars films, yeah. it's the same deal. Like you're getting like the weird comedy relief occasionally from characters. Like yes, the Ewoks did something, but also. There are a number of times that Ewoks trip over each other and like run into each other and like boing. You know, like, like, oh, guys. It's, uh, it's, I love it every time. Yeah, I love and it. I, and it's, yeah, it's the thing is, I like that. I, 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 if it's done right, I think it's funny. I, I feel like I, I left the the dinner table unsatisfied. I, I would. Well, you know what? It's uh, a secret. It's, 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 got, like, it's the middle thing. Right oh yeah, no, I know. Right? <laughs> it's the, the, in the bathroom. In the book version vomiting. of episode eight. Apparently, there's more conversation amongst Kylo and and Ray. Oh. And uh, apparently, in one, a friend of mine was telling me last night that in there is one part of their like mind conversations that Ray h- hears. I'll see you soon, sweetheart. And I was like, No, ew. Uh, what? You no. call her sweetheart? Oh, no, yeah. that you can't. can't be. You can't trust those novelizations because so, yeah. novelizations of Force Awakens insisted that it was a thumbs up yeah. that BB-8 was giving nah, him with the lighter. Finger. That was the middle finger. That's the middle finger. I rewatched. And at Force least, Awakens. if nothing else, intentionally vague uh, so that we like, decide what you in want. The Force in the Force Awakens, the, uh, gives comics, him two. the comics. The uh, comics. Uh, uh, Guaranteed that it was a middle finger. Yeah. Really? Guaranteed. It's like in the Force Awakens novelization when Han Solo sees Leia and he's like, "You changed your hair, sugar tits." Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I was yes, like, "That's really weird." Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't strange. say anything about her hair. I really think J.J. Uh, Abrams. Uh, thank God J.J. Abrams is doing episode nine, by the way. Um, I think he's got his work cut out for him because yeah. there's a lot of things that he has to. He if he doesn't answer, everyone's going to be like, "I thought probably for, well, have forgotten it by then because it's two years away." But if he doesn't answer those questions, then I'll be a lot of Star Wars fans will be like, what was that about? I'm excited, but I think J.J. Abrams generally is very excited about asking the questions and never seems too keen on answering I them. You're, you're so I think I don't know if yeah, we'll be satisfied, but I think Ryan Johnson is still writing it, right? No. He's, no? He's not writing it anymore? It said no. Ryan Johnson's writing it. <coughs> oh, I thought really? he was writing it. I thought he was. Oh, J.J. writing no, I mean, I imagine someone will go, he'll go through with a red pen or whatever. Yeah, I'm saying regardless, it's yeah, not like he writes it. and they're like, well, we got to make it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wrote it. Yeah. We got to do the thing he said. But I'm just said. curious if those things will stand out to him. He might not be too concerned with them. Yeah, so because know. they were probably like, we got to start filming tomorrow? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I can I can answer your hyperspace question, why they would, don't normally do that with the ships. Mm-hmm. It's because <laughs> they're not going to just throw away a giant capital cruiser. Destroy a Death Star? On, sure. on to destroy, they may, but the problem is, is that, again, th- for other things, they're not going to just throw them away to, throw a sh- to destroy a ship. They're not going to yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. That's, I, so that's why you're but, like, well, I don't understand. I haven't yeah. seen it before. But it's weird because it's like we have a ship, and on that ship, maybe they didn't know. Did they establish that they knew that Snoke was on that ship? They said well, it's like Snoke's Snoke's ship, ship, right? Snoke ship, right? Snoke ship. I mean, that seems like the kind of thing that, like, as soon as Snoke's ship shows up, you're He's like, "He's going to be on it." Maybe we yeah. should have lights beat that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, like this may be an opportunity yeah. for us. Are there <laughs> children on board? Who cares? Do it. <laughs> there may be something that excuses that. And yeah. This is me being an apologist, but one of the things I did like a lot about Last Jedi was how they uh, they maybe overexplained it a little bit, but they did make sure that the rules about the tension of the scene was very well explained in like nautical terms. Oh, it's like the shield has the ships in the back. They tried. Out of range of certain yeah, yeah, yeah. guns. They tried. So sure. the explanation may be, let's they, throw this out, that for a ship to like wheel around, power up its hyperdrive, and blast through a capital ship typically happens in situations where every time that ship can just get obliterated before it can go to Especially a hyperspace. Especially with the large oh, enough ship to do that That's much fair. damage. Yeah. So I in my opinion, problem with that scene. It was Perhaps an opportune that, moment. It's a great scene. Yeah. It's cool. It's much cool. in the way you can shoot down a suicide bomber before it actually hits a, totally a carrier. Fair. Yep. Maybe that is how it happens nine tenths of the time, but the situation was so bizarre and distracting. They were focusing on the transport ships. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That they're like, that. oh fuck, and they realize too late, boom, and they're half their fleet gets wiped out. It's just out. that's the kind of thing where it's like you almost appear and like the movie freezes and then it like it well, has what? not like coyote 
uh, Wiley Coyote pop up with a sign that says the reason this is happening is this. He flips over, it's this, that, and the other thing, and he goes, enjoy the movie, and yeah. then ducks down again. Yeah, there should have been an officer who was like, how did we not see this in time? And then, boom, you've already well, seen it with the Well, there was the, the guy, guy on the that. ship that yeah. turns yeah. and goes, like, they're like not really going to do this. Yeah. So. Well, they go, they go, they're warming up their drivers, like, they're just distracting us. Focus on the other. And I was like, yeah. okay. This, yeah. like, like I said, no problem with that scene. That was cool. Totally fine scene. The only problem was who was driving the, the ship. I like Laura Dern's character a lot. I did like her. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> I, I like it too, and I, some I of it might cool. be because I like Laura Dern. I, but why but introduce and kill a character in the same movie? Well, I, just, I feel I feel that's happens. lazy. Before, happens, dog. Maybe we're going to get more of it added up. Don't. It's, it's, it's a branch of the franchise we've seen develop so much now. The Vader comics were so cool yeah. when he finds Stop out. Stop defending his this movie. Why you kill off Admiral Akbar so unceremoniously? I like the Vader uh, comics. In, in, intention is <laughs> very that. important, I think, with this too. And so I got oh, my crazy tinfoil hat theory. Um, th- this weekend after having watched it because talking to everyone, everyone's opinions are so different. That they love the entire... so many scenes and they hate so many other scenes. Yeah. And everyone's, then you know what everyone's doing? They're seeing it twice. <laughs> and I was like, do you fucking think that Disney said, uh, Disney said, make make kind of we make a movie <laughs> that's kind of, it's like, like it's basically rickety. like blinking between black and white the whole time and you do. think you see things and you aren't sure, so you're in, you feel inclined to yeah. see the movie again to get answers to the questions that you think you might have missed in the first viewing. They're making yes. these movies to make money? Yeah, no, no I'm, I'm <laughs> no. not saying that's a shock, but the no. fact that you would design a movie yeah. that, that to a, leave you with a jarring course. feeling of, of indecision. I'm going to have to go see it again to see if this theory is true. Okay? <laughs> a lot of Eastern storytelling will do that. There's yeah. so many like Japanese shows that start with the most inscrutable stuff right at the top. Yeah. And you start watching it confused, and they almost, oh, yeah. almost tell you all the rules by the end. Mm-hmm. And it's constructed in that way so that people see it multiple times, and in that viewing, they start to piece the rules up. But they, or they, they, did they a, don't learn anything. In this case, maybe they don't learn anything maybe. new, but they get two tickets. But they did, the, they did the better, better version of that with The Force Awakens when they had the Ray flashback scene. And in between, oh, yeah. and, ah. and the build-ups that part was a pretty good movie. Right. I mean, this one is like, yeah, no, you're right. I miss my mind. sister. Want to go on an adventure? Okay. <laughs> maybe, blo- maybe wow. let me blow your mind. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> hey, Adam, Adam, Adam. hey Adam, let me blow your mind. What? Imagine if <laughs> I just wanted to ask. Imagine <laughs> if a whole movie was a Ray flashback. Yeah, that's, that's how I, many times did you see it? Three, four, five times. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I think you're right, James. I, I think, think that's, that's a consideration. I think I Bruce know. and I had this conversation that maybe the Tomb Raider and Ready Player One posters were uh, made weird yeah, by the yeah. studio on to, purpose. To, yeah, <laughs> to because how long that leg is, it's weird. Look isn't at that it? stupid poster. Share it. I'm going to share it. Yeah. With yeah. 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 We started doing Photoshop's and viraling it out. Don't diminish. Who knows? Maybe we're all just paranoid and crazy. Anyway, okay. Any other final thoughts? Because we have like a thousand. Yeah, no, oh, I, I love talking about. I can talk about it for I love. I love oh. talking about maybe people we'll, that hate it. Maybe we'll do a part two. That loved it. <laughs> we'll see how like the They just blew everything up and said, "Eat it, go watch it again." Yeah. Fareed. Well, how, yeah. Yeah. final thoughts. I'm clapping for Fareed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how much of Kylo's bullshit is, uh, is symbolic for the entire Star Wars franchise? Burn it all down. Start fresh. That's what. I see a lot of rule destruction and lore destruction in this. That's what Fareed's saying. My last thoughts would be when you're when you're arguing with your friends about their opinions on Star Wars. Please take a minute to listen. For God's sake, because generally you guys agree on the same thing, but Shut you have up, different James. reactions to it. It's, it blows my mind. Yeah, here we oh, <laughs> Roll out. Oh, shit, we're, shit. we're rolling out of here. Let's let's check in on the Bud Watch that we clearly shot last week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And we're back with Bud Watch 2017, keeping in the theme of all things Star Wars. That's right. Space Buddies. Oh, what yep. what didn't happen this time, boys? You know, me and as, as good a buds as we are, me and John are kind of split on this one. Pardon? Uh, it was a little, it was a little tough to get through. I mean, yeah, it's it's <laughs> all right. I'm I'm back in. I seen them in their little space. So the dogs suits. have now Brought upgraded from talking to actually using their hands. And did they grow like opposable yeah. thumbs? They can like put glasses on. They their heads they now? take those glasses on and off a lot during this movie because the glasses. Like the ones I'm wearing, they actually control the spaceship. You, you know, they do retinal retinal scanning. Of course, because it's hard for dogs to do things. So we're it's the same buds, right? B dog. Yep. And same yep. buds. Okay. Mud bud, rosebud, Buddha buddy. Okay. Uh, the other one. I unfortunately didn't have time to watch this one with you guys. So give me the uh, the quick plot rundown of the the one uh, that's <laughs> dividing the the Air Bud community. Well, uh, I guess plot wise, uh, this is the first one that has no. Sp- they don't even pretend to have sports in it. <laughs> the whole idea of like dogs playing sports is just done now. Uh, the, all the buds follow their individual owners uh, to. Uh, it's sort of like a. Wait, they're spoiling it. Yeah, they're spoiling it. Go ahead. Spoiler alert: they, they land on the moon. 
Um, is that the end of the movie? No, no, not at all. Uh, they, they they go to like an Elon Musk <laughs> style. Was, they pulled they pulled his paw and he farted and filled up his spacesuit yeah, with that, gas. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. I take it all back. All right. I love this movie. So okay. why are, why are they going to space? Uh, they're, 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 their owners are on a field trip to like an Elon Musk style uh, like SpaceX place. Who uh, the 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 leader is uh, Dauber from Coach, Patrick. Uh, from uh, yeah, it's pretty good. No uh, one knows who that is. Uh, yeah, at least James do. Uh, so <laughs> they follow their owners, and then they they step into like a like a machine that three D prints spacesuits based on whoever's standing in it. So like uh, sure. that's why they each have their individual spacesuits, and they they go to the moon. But there's a villain who's sabotaging it, right? Yeah, it's uh. What was his name? Finker, Finkel. Fink- Dr. Finkel? Finkel. Dr. Finkel. I think he's the dude from Alias. He looks kind of like a dwarf, but he's not. He was the guy in the wheelchair from Hello, Ladies. I know that. All right. Anyways, they go to the, they go in the spaceship. The guy sabotages it, so they have to park in a in a in a like dilapidated uh, Soviet space station, <laughs> which no one knows existed. But they checked the conspiracy websites yeah. oh. and found that it hadn't crashed and got in contact with them. Are there any humans in this anymore? Or is it just dogs? Uh, no, yeah, uh, no, yeah. It was Diedrich uh, Diedrich Bader. Diedrich okay. Bader From was Drew the uh, very uh, stereotypical Russian. Yeah, and he has a he has a dog named Spudnik. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Spud, because uh-huh. he looks like Spuds McKenzie. And uh, so what is it? Uh, they, 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 they land on the moon, and then they get refueled, and then they come back, and a ferret, a talking ferret, guides yeah, them safety through an asteroid it's field. Just, it's just them and Sputnik up there, and so they're like, how are we going to communicate with these dogs? They need to do something manually on the plane. And then Amy Sedaris, the ferret yeah. named Gravity, goes up to the mic thing and starts going, all right, guys, I'm going to tell you what to do. And, she um, and at she one point, them. Patrick from SpongeBob looks over and sees this ferret going, nip, 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 into the microphone, uh-huh. and he's like, maybe oh, yeah. animals can talk. This is the first one where they where humans are like, oh, these all these animals are really smart. Gotcha. And if, you, if you're if you a fan of uh, puppies just getting chucked onto camera, like in the previous installments, mm-hmm. oh my Big god, they, t- they take it to a next level. There's, yeah. there's so much of that. They're yeah. throwing them around, throwing them on a, out of spaceships, they're I, I want, hoisting them I up. I want the text at the end of the movie to say, most animals were harmed yeah. in the making of this film. <laughs> And Nearly I'm okay all. With that. Okay. Uh, um, there is there is the pulling of the paw. Of okay. So the whole movie culminates with the dog farting in space. That's yeah. that's how he's able to rocket himself. Oh, the the methane from his farts power his spacesuit, and that's how he's able to fix the satellite, which right. allows them to safely come home. Okay. Has anyone cut footage together of the Air Buddies coming in with the Challenger <laughs> blowing up mid-flight as it was about oh, to touch down? No, that's Why? a good. Oh yeah. And then it ends with a three-car parade. In their hometown. Yep. Really? And they all get yeah, just three cars, and they all get medals, and then this girl sings, I guess. Well, they wow. all get lapel pins that say "Space Buddies" that use the logo yeah. from the DVD box, and I looked it up. I couldn't find one selling on eBay. Well, that's truly a sad story for you, John. So, John, well, what's? I mean, this this is Star Wars week, so we have to do Space Buddies, obviously. But like, what's next week? What's the next? What's the next installment? Ring a little bit. We did it, or that's not a Christmas song. It's a Christmas Santa oh. Buddies. I was gonna sing a Christmas song, but oh, gotcha. Santa Buddies. They meet Santa, or do they yeah. meet a dog that's Santa? They kill uh, Santa. I, I, I do want to then, then they become Santa. I do want to take this moment. Um, I was trying to recommend a holiday film once a week. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to talk about it because I knew we had a lot to talk about with Star Wars. And a lot to talk about with Space Buddies. Yeah, impact. serious. Uh, so you guys said you would bring your holiday video this week. What should the kids be watching? Uh, we agreed on this earlier. Yeah. Better watch out. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. Better watch out. Great uh, great kind of weird, horror Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. Don't watch the trailer. Yeah, Just watch surprises. the movie. Just watch full it. of surprises. Christmas Carol yet? What is she? What, what is that? Huh? She just says words. Oh, it's weird. I can't uh, actually hear in any directions because of these ears. I know. I can only hear in front of me. Dead. Who died? Oh, they actually killed it? Just now? Yeah. Shit. Stop using up our internet. All God right. damn it. Well, the world sucks. Anyway, thanks for listening, everyone, Bye, while everybody. you still can. Uh, thank you guys for your time talking about Space Buddies. Uh, thank you to no one who sponsored this episode today. Mm. Just you people for listening, watching, and I hope you enjoyed it all. Tell a friend. Tell two, maybe. And we'll see you next time. On the Bud Watch. We'll be back. They will. I hope. It's hard to get rid of them.
<laughs> Goodbye, net neutrality. So you had the scene with like uh, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tom. What's Hiddleston. his name? Tom Hiddleston. I don't know why um, I'm Holland. saying they're... Holland. Holland. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying their actor names and other character names. Don't anyway, worry, it doesn't matter. They were talking in a bedroom, and then they briefly introduced him to the major fight, and then said, okay, you go over there and play with Falcon. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of it. And then the one the one line between...